Hey guys, what is up? It's your pal Dave from notesandbolts.com and welcome to part four of the Teensy Synth tutorial. In this episode, we're going to expand the synth by adding an ADSR envelope generator. So if you're not familiar with envelope generators, ADSR stands for Attack, Decay, Sustain, Release. And these parameters allow us to change the volume of the waveform over time, which lets us emulate different instruments like strings or bells or guitar strings, anything you can think of. So this is how it works. When I press a key, we're gonna start in our attack phase. And this parameter determines how quickly the note's gonna rise to its maximum volume. And this could be instantaneous or it could be a gradual ramp up, which is great for strings and pads and sounds like that. Once we've reached our maximum volume, we'll enter our decay phase. Now, before we talk about that, let's talk about the sustain phase. The sustain volume is the level that the note will sit at for as long as I hold the key down and the decay value will determine how quickly I'm going to drop down to that sustain level. So once again, it could be instantaneous or it could be a slow ramp. So the note will stay at the sustain level until I release the key and then we'll enter our release phase. And this determines how quickly the note is going to stop or fade down to nothing. And this can be instantaneous or a gradual ramp down, depending on what I want. And that's basically how an envelope generator works. So let's add one to our synth. Okay, to start with, we're going to add the ADSR controls to our pure data control panel. And the first thing we'll need is four faders, just like we did for our, the oscillator section. So what I'll do is go to edit mode and select this whole group here. And then we'll just duplicate that four times. Now let's label all our faders correctly. So if we click on the fader and go to properties, we can change the name to attack Okay, sustain, and release. Now we have to set our MIDI CC control numbers to something that we haven't used already. So we ended at 103, so let's just continue on with 104, 105, 106, 107. And once again, check the link in the video description to download this completed panel. All right, so let's save this as TNT Synth Panel ADSR. So to add the envelope generator to our synth, once again, we're going to use the uh, system design tool at pjrc.com slash teensy slash GUI. And here's the last version of the synth we had. So let's add our envelope generator in by deleting the lines after the mixer. And then we'll go down to effect and we'll select the envelope item. And we'll just connect the output of the mixer into the envelope and the output of the envelope into the left and right channel of our I2S output. All right, and then we just export the code as we've always done and we can copy and paste this into our Arduino sketch. Now, once again, you don't need to do this because I've already done it for you in this episodes example 
which is Teensy Synth Part 4 ADSR test. So you can download this software in the link in the video description. But just so you know, here's the new code we've just generated and here's our audio effect envelope, envelope one component. Now in our setup function, notice that I've added some starting parameters for our envelope. So I've set the attack to zero, the decay to zero, the sustain to one, which is full volume and the release to 500 milliseconds, which is half a second. Now, if we go down to our osplay function that we've been using, I've removed the part where I set the oscillators on manually and replaced it with this envelope one note on command. And this basically just starts the attack phase of the envelope. So as soon as the note comes in, it's going to set the frequencies here just like we did before and then it's going to trigger the attack of the envelope. And to stop the envelope, instead of setting all the oscillators to zero volume, we're now going to call envelope note off, which will start the release phase of the envelope. And this will fade the note down to zero at the speed set by the release parameter. Now to change the parameters, I've added some more controls to our control change function. So if you recall, we're using controller number 104, 105, 106, 107 for attack, decay, sustain, release. And here they are here. So case 104, so if my MIDI CC number is 104, I'm going to set the envelope one attack parameter to this. Now, if you're not familiar with this function, make sure you go back and watch the previous parts. So hopefully you didn't skip here without watching parts one, two, and three. You wouldn't do that, right? <laughs> okay, so that basically gives us for um, a value of zero to 3000 milliseconds for our attack phase. And I also use the same values for the decay phase. So I've got a three second possible decay time using the same formula. Now the sustain value is actually a volume level from zero to one. And remember that zero to a hundred percent. So I've just used our value divided by 127, which gives us that zero to one range. So that's going to be the value or the volume level of our sustain parameter. And finally, if MIDI CC 107 comes through, it's going to trigger this, which is our release phase. And once again, I've used a maximum value of three seconds uh, for our release value, which will give you a nice gentle ramp down. But really that's it, it's pretty straightforward. And once again, if you're not familiar with these formulas, make sure you watch the previous parts of this video. So we're going to upload it to our Teensy board to enable our envelope generator. So once again, go up to tools and make sure your Teensy board type is set. So this is 3.2. Make sure the USB type is MIDI. And you can leave everything else the same. And we'll make sure our Teensy is plugged into USB and we'll just click upload. All right, so our Teensy loader program has uploaded the code and everything works okay. And remember, you may need to push the reset button if you get an error message saying that Teensy didn't respond. But in this case, it looked like it did okay. Now to make sure our Teensy board gets picked up as a MIDI device, we're going to power cycle it. We'll also plug in our MIDI keyboard. There we go. And now we can open up our pure data control panel. And we'll go to media, MIDI settings, and set our input and output devices. So input is going to be our controller, our nano key two, and the output is Teensy MIDI. 
apply. Okay, now when I hit a key, you should get some sound. So let's set our oscillators. So we'll set the noise down. We'll set our oscillator to full. We'll set our oscillator one full. We'll set the octave down one. Okay, now we can uh, play with our ADSR. So first we'll start with our attack range at zero. And you can see that the attack is immediate. Now if I increase this, you'll hear a gradual ramp up of the sound. And if I go all the way up to three seconds, there's a three second ramp of the sound. Now let's try our decay. So we'll set this kind of low and we'll set our sustain kind of low so you can really hear, hear the value. So you should hear a ramp up. Let's increase or decrease this attack a bit. So you should hear a ramp up and then a drop to our sustain level. And there you go. Ramp up, drop. And now we're at our sustain level. And right now our release is immediate. So as soon as I release the key, it's off. So let's set the release up to a nice slow release. And let's hear the whole thing together. And as I release the key, gradual release down to nothing. So there you go. Our ADSR looks like it's working. All right, so we've got our ADSR working, but I think there's one more thing we need to do. Now, we're adding more and more controls to our pure data control panel. And as you can see, it's getting a little out of control. <laughs> so let's see if we can clean this up a bit and make it look a little more professional. So in pure data, there's a thing you can use called subassemblies that will help clean this up. To make a subassembly, what you do is you go to the object command and you just type PD and then the name of the object you want to create. So we'll call this ADSR. And when I click outside of the window, I will get this new window popped up and this is our ADSR object. So what we'll do is we'll right click on this object and select properties. And you notice this setting here, graph on parent. When I select that, that's going to create this little box. So that means whatever I put in this window is going to show up in this little box. So I can kind of hide all this functionality so you don't have to look at it. So this is a little small to fit all this. So let's click it again and select properties and we'll set the size to 265 by 200. And we'll apply and there you go. So that's a nice, nice size panel. Now you can see if we go to our object window, there's our panel. And to put it a little more into the corner, we'll set the margin size to 10. And that will stick it a little more into the corner of our window here. So the next thing I'll do is I'm going to add a canvas. Now a canvas is an object that allows you to basically add a colored square. And if I right click on this, now when you're working with a canvas, make sure you select this corner and you'll see this little square appear. And if I right click on that, select properties, I can set my canvas properties. So let's set the, the size to be the same as our, our sub panel here. So we'll go 265 by 200 and let's give it a label uh, ADSR and we'll set a color how about this dark gray here all right and there it is and we'll try to uh, get our ADSR label maybe a little more centered so I'll play with this 
x offset so what's let's, let's try 120 and you just have to experiment with that but that looks pretty good all right so we'll apply that now we'll grab our canvas by the little square and move it so it basically lines up with our frame now what we can do is copy all this stuff and copy it and then paste it in our sub panel here now you notice I'm leaving the uh, MIDI CC controls outside of our frame because I don't want them visible on our main panel so when I close this you should see just the things we want to see which is our number and our labeled faders now I can grab this whole panel and move it to wherever I want so let's make this even a little more interesting so I'm going to select it click open and that will open my sub panel and I'm going to make these faders look a little nicer so I'll select it click properties and first of all I'm going to make it wider so I'll, I'll change the width to 30 and let's give it a little better color so I'll set the background which is the background of the fader we'll set that to black I'll set the front which is the the control I'll set that to white and I'll leave the label as is and maybe I'll just try to center it a little better and we'll click OK to apply and that looks good I like that alright so let me just do the same with all the other controls alright there we go so that looks much better so I'm gonna do the same thing for this section our mixer section and let's add our octave control into a new panel that we'll call oscillator Now also notice that I can put our MIDI in and MIDI out commands into one of these boxes to hide them as well. And let's save it. And there you go. So let's get out of edit mode. That looks better. Actually, let's change this guy to some better colors all right there we go so uh, that looks much better now let's get out of edit mode and everything should work okay all right guys so that will do it for this chapter there's a lot more to do on this synth, so make sure you subscribe so you know when the next chapter is up. Once again, I'd like to sincerely thank my patrons for helping to make this all possible, and I will see you next time.